AI never sleeps, and this week has been absolutely insane. We have an AI that can copy and recreate smells. We have a new AI that can make videos in between two frames, and a new image model that beats Flux. We have a real-time AI-generated Minecraft and RPG game. OpenAI releases their search GPT feature, but Google also quietly releases a really helpful AI tool. NVIDIA also releases a revolutionary model for humanoid robots, and a lot more. So let's jump right in. All right, so first up, we have Framer. This is a tool that can take one image as the start frame and another image as the end frame, and it would generate a video to fill everything in between these two frames. Here's another example. And best of all, this also works for cartoon and anime. Here's another example. It even works with line art and sketches like this. Now, you might be wondering, well, Toon Crafter, which I've introduced several months ago, can already do this. So what's the difference between this and Framer? Well, in addition to just interpolating the video in between two frames, you can also control for the movements of the objects in this interpolation. You can draw trajectories of how you want objects to move in the video. So here's one example. And here's another example. And not only that, but if you don't draw any trajectories, it can also just auto-interpolate the action for you, as you can see here. So it's not necessary to manually draw out a path. Here are a few more examples where if you draw different trajectories, you can see how the interpolation is slightly different for these generations, even though it uses the same start and end frame. And here's what I think is the coolest use case for this. You can generate Pokemon evolution videos from this tool. You just need to input one evolution stage at the start frame and the next evolution stage at the end frame, and it would fill in the blanks. Here are some other examples of character transformations using this tool. And as you can see, in this comparison, Framer does much better than existing methods for interpolation. As you can see, most of them just have a lot of warping or distortions or hallucinations, but Framer tends to keep everything fairly consistent across the entire video. Here's another example where all the other methods just have a lot of warping. It's clearly not usable, but Framer's generation is actually decent. Here's yet another example of this bus. And again, out of all these methods, Framer is the only one that generates a decent and consistent video. So it's a super powerful tool. The awesome thing is they have already released a Hugging Face demo for you to try out. So I'll link to this main page as well as their Hugging Face demo, where you can upload start and end frames and then test out different trajectories and generate videos from that. Next up, we have a new AI real-time video game, and this is based on Minecraft. Now, a few weeks ago, I already talked about Google's project called Game Engine, which uses AI to create a real-time playable simulation of the shooter game Doom. This can basically generate Doom in real time at over 20 frames per second on just a single tensor processing unit. So none of these scenes are pre-programmed. The AI just generates everything on the fly as you move around, which is pretty incredible already. And then just a few weeks after that, Microsoft releases their project called Diamond, which generates a simulation of Counter-Strike in real time. It's based on a similar architecture, so all these scenes are not pre-programmed or pre-designed. AI just kind of makes it up as you move around. And this one is even more impressive because you can play this at 10 frames per second on just an RTX 3090. Now, fast forward to this week, we have another real-time AI video game, but this time it's a simulation of Minecraft. So this is Project Oasis, developed by Descartes AI. And again, this is a fully playable, fully interactive Minecraft game, but everything is generated on the fly as you move around or carry out certain actions. So as you can see, there's no game engine, there's no code, there's no logic, but you can do all the normal stuff that you can do in Minecraft. For example, walk around, break blocks, check inventory, build stuff, swim and jump around. Even your health points work, you can use tools, you can dig tunnels, and none of this is pre-programmed. They've only trained the AI on millions of hours of Minecraft gameplay data. 
But alongside that gameplay footage, it was also trained on the corresponding actions that were taken by users. So for example, if you press this key on the keyboard, this will happen. If you press another key on the keyboard, another thing would happen. And then after a lot of data being fed into this AI model, it kind of understood what would happen if you press a certain key on a keyboard or if you carry out a certain action. And by the way, this is exactly how Microsoft's Diamond project was trained as well. So it uses this diffusion model to predict the next frame in the video based on a certain action. Now, the cool thing about Oasis is it produces 20 frames per second and they claim it has zero latency. So it creates a new frame every 0.04 seconds which is way faster than state-of-the-art video generators like Kling or Runway Gen 3, which typically need around 10 to 20 seconds to generate one second of video. So you can actually play this real-time AI Minecraft game on their website right now. I'll link to this page in the description below. But in addition to just playing it on their website, they've also open sourced the model weights on Hugging Face. So this is a 500 million parameter model. It's around 2.4 gigabytes. So really tiny compared to other diffusion transformer models you might be familiar with. And so you can actually go ahead and download this and run this real time AI Minecraft locally on your computer. How cool is that? All right, next up, this paper by Google is also super interesting. So they called this project Unbounded, and this is basically a never-ending AI-generated RPG game. So here's what it is. First of all, Unbound can create custom and consistent characters with unique appearances. And then you can interact with these characters in an open-ended virtual world. For example, you can feed them, move them around, etc. And this is an open-ended interaction because there is no storyline. There's no predefined rules constraining the experience. That's why it's called Unbounded. So for example, you can generate this young witch character, you can choose any game environment, and you can do whatever you want. You can get her to hunt a dragon, go buy potion, explore around, go to a village, go shopping, go to a pond, rest and eat, have a picnic, go to school, go hike up a mountain. I mean, the possibilities are endless. And here's how it works. There's multiple components in this architecture. So first of all, they do have this IP adapter, which is basically used to create consistent characters. So this ensures that this character looks fairly consistent across all these scenes. And they also have a two agent LLM system. The first LLM is used to build the world and generate the narratives. And the second LLM is used for simulating user interactions. And here they've used a distilled LLM. This is a much smaller and condensed model. In fact, I believe they used Gemma 2B, which only has 2 billion parameters. This is a very tiny model that can fit in consumer grade products. So this is a pretty interesting concept. Think of it as like a Tamagotchi, basically, where you have stats here like your hunger level, your energy level, and I don't know, this is a party hat, so I'm guessing this is the fun or happiness level. And as you move around the world and you carry out different actions, these levels will go up or down. So on one hand, you might think this is not very impressive. This is just generating images with consistent characters, but it's not as simple as that. You're also overlaying these energy levels on top of the game. And as the character moves around, these levels also change. This is a fully interactive game you can see how this technology could be potentially used in the future to create real-time AI RPG games, where instead of images, it's going to be videos, and everything will be open-ended. There's no predefined storyline. The AI can generate the world, the enemies, the story on the fly as you play the game, and it's never-ending. I think video games in the next five years are going to be very different from what we have now. All right, next up, we have this new and open source upscaler, which outperforms other existing upscalers out there so far. So this is called DreamClear. And let me just show you an example of this. This is really good. So if you start with this image, this is blurry as hell. But after going through this upscaler and detailer, look at that. I mean, this is very tricky to pull off, especially if the original image looks like this, but it's able to add in so much detail to this image. Really impressive. Here's another example where the starting image is just very blurry, but after this upscaler, look at the amount of detail added to the fur and the eyes of this cat. Here's another example. So super blurry photo, and then 
here is what you get afterwards. It works very well with faces as well. And then here is another very blurry photo, and here is the result after that. Here's another example of the Northern Lights. So here's the before, here's the after. Really incredible detail, especially the, the trees and branches here. You can see the initial image is so blurry, it's really hard for an upscaler to guess, well, what should this look like if you sharpen it up? But this handles it very well. And if you dive deeper into their research paper, they compare this with other state-of-the-art upscalers like Essergan and Supir, which you might be familiar with if you've played around with Stable Diffusion. But it looks like Dream Clear, which is this blue bar, outperforms the rest of these upscalers in terms of quality. And the awesome thing is they've already released the code and the weights. So you can go to their GitHub, which I'll link to in the description below, and download this upscaler to use locally on your computer. In other news, Google kind of low-key released this new AI tool called LearnAbout. And you can basically enter any topic you want to learn about, and you'll be able to dive right in very easily. You know how a few weeks ago, Google released their Notebook LM audio overview feature, which allows you to upload any document and it would generate a podcast from that? Well, I think this new LearnAbout feature is as useful. So let's try this out. Now note that this is still in the experimental stage. It might not be available for all countries. Anyways, if you're able to access it, this is the interface you'll see. Let's type in something like, teach me about wildlife conservation. So you can see it starts giving you information about wildlife conservation. It breaks it down into a really nice and aesthetic interface. And then there's more rabbit holes that you can go down. So for example, major threats to wildlife, there are a few of them like habitat loss, climate change, pollution, poaching and illegal wildlife trade, etc., etc. You can also choose to simplify or go deeper into any one topic. So for example, let's click on poaching and illegal wildlife trade. And what this will do is output more information on your selected topic. And so first of all, it gives you a nice summary of what this is, and then it gives you a few other rabbit holes that you can go down that are related to illegal wildlife trade. So for example, ivory, rhino horn, tiger parts, etc. And then again, you can either simplify this or go deeper or even get some images from Google search. And then it also suggests questions for you to ask further. And this is actually quite similar to what perplexity does as well. So let's click on this one, what is being done to stop this illegal activity. And note that as I go down deeper and deeper into these rabbit holes, I can also see the paths that I've selected in the this left column here. So here's the interactive list where I can select another category. And if I expand this, there's also further suggested topics for wildlife conservation. So for example, biodiversity, ecosystem balance, and this platform I think really gives you a broad and in-depth understanding of a certain topic. You can go as broad as you want or as in-depth as you want. So for example, if you wanna learn about AI or machine learning or data science, I think this would be a really helpful tool to help you get started. So going back to here, not only does it suggest some categories which you can inspect further, but it also embeds a video for you to watch if there is one. And then let's click on get images and see what that gives us. And this is what we get. So I believe this is just pulling from Google image search, but this is a really nice way to fetch images on a given topic. So this is a really helpful and free resource if you wanna learn about something. I can't believe this hasn't really gotten a lot of attention. It seems like they just quietly released it, but yeah, there you go. I'll link to this in the description below for you to check out. Thanks to Vivago for sponsoring this video. Bring your imaginations to life with Vivago, an advanced AI platform that allows you to create stunning images and videos. They have a powerful video generator that can produce clips of up to 10 seconds long. Plus, they have a new magic prompt and prompt bot feature, which uses AI to help you craft the perfect prompt for your video. With their keyframe feature, you can upload images for the start and end frame of the video for more control. This allows you to produce some pretty cool transition videos. Another feature they've added is this motion strength slider, which allows you to control the intensity of motion in your video. It doesn't just work well for realistic videos, but also for cartoon and animation style videos. And Vivago's magic doesn't end there. They offer a ton of AI powered editing tools that will elevate your creative process, such as repainting, 
Image Enhancer, Magic Expand, and Object Removal. You can also enhance videos to 4K resolution. Plus, you can easily generate 3D models with just text or an image. You can also generate and edit these 3D models directly in Apple Vision Pro for a seamless AR experience. Try it out for free via the link in the description below. Unleash your creativity today. All right, next up, NVIDIA releases this AI model called Hover. This is a really tiny 1.5 million parameter model that can control the body of a humanoid robot. Now, when we walk or balance or move our arms and legs, we don't actively think about it, right? Our brain just handles it subconsciously. Well, this Hover model is basically doing the same thing. It helps humanoid robots coordinate motions like walking and balancing and moving their arms and legs. Now, they trained this hover model in NVIDIA's Isaac Sim, which is like a virtual gym. This is where humanoid robots can undergo tens of thousands of rounds of training, and because this is a virtual simulation, the cost is way lower than conducting this training with real robots in the real world. Now, NVIDIA's Isaac Sim simulates the physics of real life. So even though everything is virtual, after you finish training this hover model, you can put it in a real robot in the physical world and everything will still carry over pretty seamlessly. The robot can balance and walk and do other complex motions right out of the box, zero shot. In other words, you don't need to train it further in the real world. By the way, this is a tweet from Dr. Jim Fan from NVIDIA. And the cool thing about Hover is that it can understand all sorts of ways to control the robot. For example, you can use something like XR devices to control the robot's heads and hands, or you can use motion capture technology to make the robot copy your whole body. Or you can even use a joystick, like in video games, to make the robot move around. So Hover provides a unified interface for us to control the robot using whichever input devices are convenient at hand. And you can plug this into the brain of any humanoid robot that can be simulated in this Isaac virtual gym. The really impressive thing about this is Hover is really tiny. It's only 1.5 million parameters, whereas state-of-the-art models like GPT-4 are estimated to be around 1.76 trillion parameters. I can't do public math here, so let's just use Google's calculator. So 1.76 trillion divided by 1.5 million. This means that NVIDIA's Hover model is over 1 million times smaller than state-of-the-art language models. But the fact that it's still able to smoothly control these robots is really impressive. This shows that you don't need huge data centers or even really expensive GPUs to power these humanoid robots. In other news, this is probably the most interesting piece of content that I've come across this week. We have a new AI that can now replicate smells. This might sound like something from a sci-fi movie, but we can actually do this right now. So this AI company called Osmos has figured out how to capture a smell in one place and recreate it from scratch. How crazy is that? So here's how it works. They start by getting the scent of something, like a plum, and then they're going to put this in a special container to trap the scent. And then they use this fancy machine called a gas chromatography mass spectrometry to break down the smell into all its different molecules. They then use an AI model coupled with a scent map to figure out the recipe for the smell. And then with those ingredients, you can actually create a substance that smells exactly like the scent that you captured. Because if you think about it, smell is just data that our nose can pick up. So as long as we find a way to break down smells into this data, we can get AI to analyze and understand and recreate this data. Now, here's where it gets really wild. You might be familiar with 3D printers. These basically print out 3D objects based on a set of instructions. Well, imagine the same thing, but for smells. Let's say someone wants to send you a smell. Well, they could potentially capture it with a certain device and then send that data over to you. And then you could have a scent printer that would receive this data and recreate the smell in your own home. It's like teleporting the smell of something. Now, this sounds totally sci-fi, but with this technology, I think we're pretty close to being able to do this. And this tech could have huge implications for various industries. Imagine watching a movie and then being able to smell the ocean in a beach scene or sending your mom the scent of a newborn baby. It's not just about fun stuff either. 
This tech could also be used for things like detecting diseases or improving food safety. Also this week, you might have heard of a mysterious new image generator that has shown up on this leaderboard by Artificial Analysis. So this is a leaderboard for the top AI image models out there. For example, you can see Flux and Ideogram and Midjourney and Stable Diffusion 3.5 as well. And apparently there was a new one released this week under the secretive name Red Panda, which, at least based on the initial ELO scores, seems to beat everything else, including Flux 1.1 Pro. Well, a few days later, it was revealed that Red Panda is actually Recraft version 3. Jesus, am I on the right site? What is this? Uh, Recraft.ai, no, it, it is the right site. <laughs> Anyways, that was my initial response to this homepage. I was like, am I on the right site? Because the design of this is quite interesting, to say the least. Anyways, this is a closed source image generator, so you won't be able to download the weights, you won't be able to fine tune anything, and no, you cannot generate NSFW content with this. However, the image quality of this is pretty good. As you can see from these examples, it's able to generate some pretty realistic images. It's also capable of generating images with a lot of text, which is very challenging for even the top image models right now. But as you can see in these examples, it handles it very well. They also claim that it can handle human anatomy more accurately than competitors. Here's another cool feature which I really like and I don't see an easy way to do this in Flux or Ideogram. So with Recraft you can use multiple images together and it would try to merge them seamlessly into one image. This unleashes a lot of creative possibilities. Anyways, you can try this out right now. I'll link to their site in the description below and you get some free daily credits to use when you sign up. Now, that being said, benchmarks and leaderboards could be manipulated to some extent, so take this with a grain of salt. And some users have reported mixed results. Some say it's slightly worse than Flux. Some say it's just marginally better, but not a significant improvement. I'm actually planning to do a full video testing this out. I'm going to compare it with the other leading models out there so you can get a sense of how good it really is. So stay tuned for that video. In other news, Runway has released some advanced camera control features for their Gen 3 Alpha Turbo video model. And this gives you really precise control over the camera movements of your video. So for example, there are now several settings you can adjust such as the horizontal movement, vertical movement, panning, tilting, zooming, and rolling. And here are just some examples of the resulting videos after adjusting some of these settings. And you can see the camera motion is actually very clean. It's hard to notice any flaws with these videos, and this is a super powerful tool. I think this gives creators a lot more control over how they want the video to look like. In other news, OpenAI has shipped quite a lot of things this week. Most notably, they finally released their search GPT function, at least to Plus and Team users. Unfortunately, if you're on the free plan, you won't have access to this yet. But if you're on one of their paid plans, at the bottom of your chat window, you should see this globe icon, and clicking on that would activate this search GPT function. Now, what this feature does is it basically incorporates web search into your answer, because before the responses from ChatGPT, at least on their native interface, might not have the most up-to-date information. But right now, with web search, it can pull the most up-to-date data from the internet. So as you can see, if I ask it to plan a trip to the Amalfi Coast, not only does it give me a text answer, but it also includes some sources which I can read further, plus it includes some images, and I really like the whole design of this interface. It's really clean and aesthetic, and you can also ask it follow-up questions, and it will answer you while pulling information from the internet. Now note that there's already a free tool out there that does this, which is Perplexity, and I'm a huge fan of Perplexity. They've actually existed for a while now, and it does pretty much the same thing. So if I ask it to plan a road trip to the Amalfi Coast, let's see what we get. So you can see in its answer, it's pulling information from the internet. It's citing where it got this information. It also lists the sources at the top so you can read further. And it also suggests some relevant follow-up questions. So let's click on this one and see what we get. 
And note that for photos, perplexity groups them all into this right column, which is a slight difference from the UI of GPT search. But again, you can see in all its answers, it tries to pull information from the internet and it cites everything for you. Now, just from a UI and design perspective, I do prefer the GPT layout a bit more. It's just more aesthetic and cleaner, plus the images aren't just all grouped in a right column, they're actually added throughout the text. But honestly, both GPT search and perplexity are very similar. It's really hard to pick a clear winner here. What we know for sure is that both of these are definitely direct competitors of Google search. You might have experienced that Google search results have gotten worse and worse recently, and this is due to too many ads, but also people are just gaming the system with SEO. They're not really providing information you're looking for, but they're just optimizing their content to rank well on Google search results. And I mean, it's just a pain to manually go through all these results and find the information you need. Wouldn't it be nice if you could just ask an AI and the AI would pull all the relevant information for you into one answer? So I do think both GPT search and perplexity are going to take a lot of market share away from Google search. In fact, OpenAI isn't even being subtle about it. They've tweeted that they've also released a Chrome extension which you can use to set GPT search as the default search engine instead of Google. Anyways, let me know in the comments what you think of this. Do you think Google search is dying? And will it be replaced by these AI chatbots like Perplexity and GPT search? Also, what do you think about Google's new Learn About feature? Do you think that this is Google's answer to their reduced traffic? Anyways, here's another cool feature that OpenAI has shipped this week. So they finally, finally added the ability for you to search through your chat history. Now, this feature is currently available to Plus and Team users, and you can basically search your chats using this magnifying glass button. And according to them, free users will start getting access to this throughout the next month. Another awesome announcement is that their advanced voice feature is now available on their desktop apps as well. So I'll link to this page in the description below where you can download the desktop version of ChatGPT. And there's a version for both Mac OS and Windows. Note that before the advanced voice mode was only a feature in the mobile ChatGPT app. But finally, they've added this feature into their desktop app as well. So you can chat with a really natural AI voice right on your computer. Anyways, that sums up all the highlights in AI this week. Let me know in the comments what you think of all of this. As always, I will be on the lookout for the top AI news and tools to share with you. So if you enjoyed this video, remember to like, share, subscribe, and stay tuned for more content. Also, there's just so much happening in the world of AI every week, I can't possibly cover everything on my YouTube channel. So to really stay up to date with all that's going on in AI, be sure to subscribe to my free weekly newsletter. The link to that will be in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.